Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and welcome to the 11th and final episode of How to Write a High School Lab Report. Today we're taking a look at the format. So first things first, the order of the sections. This is something that's very basic, but a lot of students forget it. So please, pause the video, write all of these down in the right order, and make sure that every lab you write has these in the correct order. Such a simple thing, but you will lose marks if they're out of order. Um, you may notice a couple things there. Under the introduction section, in brackets, I wrote purpose. If you watched the introduction video, which I hope you did, uh, you'll notice that at, I said at the very end, the concluding sentence should be your purpose. Some teachers prefer that purpose is actually a separate section. So you may want to ask your other teachers, do they want introduction and then purpose separately? For me, they are combined together. And then also at the end, I wrote references. If this is a lab that requires a lot of research, uh, or any research at all, I guess, if it's one that requires an introduction, you need to have references. So those, for me, come at the very end of the lab report. Some teachers prefer them to happen, those uh, references to occur right after the introduction section. Depends on your teacher, so again, ask your teacher if it's for another course. But for me, they should come at the very end. Couple other things, number your pages, especially if you're handing these in on paper, not electronically. If a page gets lost, the teacher will never know unless there's a page numbers and we can see that one of the pages is missing. Also use a standard font. None of these fancy script uh, fonts, I know they look pretty, but if it's hard to read, you probably won't get very good marks. Reason being, if I can't read the font, I don't know what you said. And if I don't know what you said, I don't know if you hit on the important concepts. And if I don't know if you hit on the important concepts, I can't give you marks for those things. So make sure it's easy for your teacher to read. Uh, along the same lines, you want to use sort of a standard 11 to 12 point font. If it's too small, I won't be able to read it. If it's too big, it, well, it's just kind of obnoxious. So keep it to 11 to 12 point font. Use headings to indicate subsections and subsections. And you can do this using bold, italics, underline, whichever one you prefer. So for example, in a discussion section, you would have a major heading that says discussion, and then underneath it, let's say your discussion includes a general discussion about the lab, and then there's a discussion, maybe it's an inquiry lab, so you're talking about sources of error and strengths and limitations, and then maybe there are some discussion questions, so again, you'd have a heading for that. So you'd split it up into these subsections. And be consistent with your font choices, with your font styles like the italics, the bold, and so on, and with the spacing. So if your lab is changing throughout, that's a problem. So pick one standard that you like and use it through your whole lab. Next thing, diagrams, data tables, observation charts are very important. Make sure you're using them appropriately. So if you need to review the data tables and graph videos, go back, watch those videos again so you know how to write or how to make them properly and when to use them. For diagrams, we don't use these as often, but maybe in your introduction section you need some help explaining a theory or explaining a concept, then you can use a diagram. Also in a procedure section, maybe you've got some complicated setup of glassware and you want a picture to show how you've done that. So those are appropriate, method, or appropriate times to use diagrams. Please check your spelling and grammar, especially since most students work on their computer for their lab reports. It's just one button that you have to click and it checks your spelling and grammar for you. Please, please, please do this step. Also, check for scientific terminology. I know your computer won't do this one for you, but check for your scientific terminology. So for example, at home you may like baking and you use uh, baking soda all the time. You know what it is, you use it all the time. But in a chemistry lab, it's called sodium bicarbonate. So please use the proper IUPAC terminology. And then the last one is units. Make sure you're using units and the proper units in your calculations, in your data tables, in your graphs, even in just regular paragraph form when you're talking about numbers. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.